Hey everyone and welcome back to Super Mario Sunshine. So in the last episode we uh, went ahead and made our way to Gelato Beach and in this episode we're going to be heading back to Gelato Beach and grabbing everything we haven't gotten, which means we're getting pretty close to a mission that I've been dreading for a while. But first we got to do episode 4 and who oh boy. This mission I've also been dreading for a while. The Sandbird is born. The legendary Sandbird. So as you can see, the egg is, well, open. And we just gotta head over there. Uh, what do you have to say? You were pretty worried about the Sandbird last time. Hey, guess what? The Sandbird, it finally hatched. Don't bother looking for it, though. It flew off right away. Now, you'd think that because of that, you wouldn't have to worry about it anymore, because it's not your problem, but that's not the case. Anyway, what do you have to say? Hey, I think you're in need of a pair of my special sun sage. Ooh, that, well, again, maybe you're not ready. You need to spend a bit more time here on Isle Delphi, you know? Come on back when you think you're ready for a pair, see ya. Yeah, if you talk to that guy after you get 30 shines, he'll let you wear sunglasses. Which is pretty cool, I guess. Anyway, what you're supposed to do is pretty obvious. You just gotta make your way up here and fall into the hole. And now we get to see the legendary Sandbird. It's a bunch of sand blocks. And it's a red coin mission. Oh boy, my two favorite things combined. The legendary Sandbird is climbing around the tower. Watch your feet. Will do, Flood, but if I die, then that's not gonna happen. Okay, there's blue coins around here, but again, I'm not planning on getting them just yet. But the Sandbird will be making turns, and eventually I'm pretty sure it will completely flip over to its side. Like, full 180 degrees. Okay, that cloud is solid. Oh, okay. But... So far, just your normal red coin mission. Okay, I think when it flaps like that, it means it's about to turn over. And you want to be close to one of the sides for that. Yep, here we go. Not that bad. And the last coin, I think, after that one on the tail, is on the tower over there. So you basically just gotta grab that and then wait for it, the sandbird to fly over. Okay, so its tail is moving around a lot. Okay, plain and simple. Now I just gotta wait for it to fly around the tower. Uh, okay, gotta wait for it to go up, cause I don't want to die. All right, I think we're almost there. And this is the last coin you're gonna want, cause when you get the coin, the shine will spawn right there. And that was far easier than I had anticipated. <laughs> but I guess that's <laughs> that's the entire mission, really not much else to say about it. It's just you go into the thing, you get the red coins, and you get out. But I will see you back for mission five. Alright, so now we're moving on to mission five, Il Piantesimo Sand Sprint. Okay, so this is one of like two or three missions where you're gonna be seeing this guy. He is a man in a pianta suit that you have to race. And if you if you like manage to texture his hat, his like mask off, you'll see that he's the postman from uh, Majora's Mask. Zelda, <laughs> I don't know what to commentate. I am Il Piantasimo, and now we shall race that flag. Yeah, pretty self-explanatory. This is like the Koopa the Quick in Super Mario 64. It is a race to the finish flag, and only one can triumph. By the way, the current record is 35 seconds. Are you at the ready? Then get set and go! Okay. Mario had his flood thing out for something. Okay. Now, I don't remember this being that hard based on all of the videos I watched of this game, but we'll see about that. Okay, uh... Okay, that's just the thing I got hurt. And I'm pretty sure I've already lost. Because I don't know where the frick I'm supposed to be going. Oh, yeah. It's over here. I've already lost, because I'm pretty sure he gets there in, like, 
I'm pretty sure that 35 seconds is his time. But I, we might as well finish anyway. Yeah, he's, he's already up here. Now this is pretty epic what he does. You poke into the flat biscuit, I must laugh at you! Ha 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 ha! Next time, show me what you really got with you, please. I know we shall race again. Ciao! And he slaughters you. Now, I'm pretty sure there are worse penalties for losing a race, but not really. Anyway, I guess I never really show, but that submarine is where we're going to be going when we're done with Gelato Beach. So I guess I'll see you back there when I win. And there we go. Really not that hard. I just didn't know where to go. So now we got to wait for him to get up. And are you going to slaughter me this time for winning? Phew, ha You are pretty good. You have some speed. You have grown ever so slightly in my esteem. Slightly. We will meet again, and goodbye. Okay, that's not really goodbye as much as it is, uh, shut up, take my money. Okay, but anyway, <laughs> that's really all there is for this mission. Other than, like, the first few missions of Gelato Beach, the missions here really aren't that long. But we'll see what happens in the next mission. Okay... Episode 6, Red Coins in the Coral Reef. Uh, this one doesn't sound horrible, and from what I remember, it isn't too horrible. It's just another Red Coin mission. But you get to travel into a coral reef, which really isn't a good idea, Mario. You should know that going around coral reefs is a no-no. I mean, if anything, they should be arresting us for that and not stealing all of the life out of their island. But that's just me. Okay, so you just gotta swim over here, and there will be some red coins around here. Now, I think at least two of them are with the fish here. Okay, uh, I forgot how to uh, swim down. Okay, uh, okay, B. Eh. And there's your air meter. And, yeah, the red coins sometimes like to phase through the ground like that, because they're, like, connected to the fish. Okay, I think that I'm gonna get all these other ones first. Where you at? Okay, one. Two. Okay. Coming back. Three. I actually heard somewhere that the Great Barrier Reef is, like, slowly, I guess, dying. Which is pretty sad, seeing as how cool it is. Like, if you've never seen it, you should really go look up pictures of it. It's really something else. Like, I guess this is a pretty nice coral reef, but it's really small here. Okay, refill your air, Mario, and give me that red coin. Okay, and then... Okay, there's another one attached to the fish over here. <laughs> and Call of Duty Ghosts used fish AI as a selling point. Ha. Okay. Okay, arguably that is something that... That is one thing that they could have done better with this game. Is the red coins and the fish AI. Fish AI, worse than Call of Duty. <laughs> but then again, this game came out like eight years before Call of Duty Ghosts. Okay, grab that. And where is the last two coins? I need to get coins so I can go have Peach, even though she's just fine. Actually, I guess Mario's technically on probation or something, because he's not allowed to... Because he's not allowed to leave. Okay. Here is number seven. Now, wo is number eight? I used that same joke in, like, one of my... In, like, my third video or something. There it is. Once again, really not a hard mission. It just takes a little more time than the others. But... That's really all there is to it. I don't really get what it is with the camera, and it, like, cones in whenever you get the camera behind a wall or something, but that's number 28, and I guess that number... 
I don't know, number seven, I guess, of the world. You can all guess what that is. Well, if you guessed that number seven was going to be a Shadow Mario mission, you were indeed correct. But if you guessed that every mission was a Shadow Mario mission when it was mission seven, you would also be correct. But... <laughs> I don't know. Mission seven. It's Shadow Mario after him. Okay, hopefully he won't give me nearly as much trouble as he did on friggin' Rico Harbor. That was like a hell. Okay. No oh boy, he's he's doing the good the good old dive slide. Okay. You know, I think it would be what I think would be pretty cool for if like Nintendo would do this if they like made it so instead of like you know how like if Mario sprays water on the ground and he he does that like dash through it he like goes super far. I I think it would be cool if Nintendo like did something like that, but he used the goop instead. <laughs> but I guess we're not really here to complain about stuff that we wish Nintendo could have done better. Oh, yeah, that is way easier than the one on Rico Harbor. But that's probably me being bad as a player and not Nintendo being bad as developers. Because they really aren't. Because they made, they made amazing games. But next mission is the one I was talking about in the beginning that I am oh so dreading. And that mission that I have been dreading is the Watermelon Festival. One thing that you have probably heard every single review complain about in this game. But anyway, what this basically is, is there's a little, like, kiosk there or something, and you have to bring a watermelon there, and whoever brings the best watermelon gets a Shine Sprite. And that should probably be treason of the highest order, seeing as how their island needs those to survive. But maybe it's like fossil fuels and that people thought there were an infinite amount of them when really there were just like 120. Okay. So anyway, if you remember those reviews, you've probably seen. You can see it up there. You can see it up there. Rather than growing your own watermelon like a good sensible little Mario, because that would take too long and you need to be fast. Instead, you just have to come up here and steal a watermelon from this little ledge up here. And this is where the hard part comes in. The restaurant's down there, and you have to get it the watermelon down from up here. And that kind of requires a lot of precision. And by precision, I mean luck, because these cataquacks, they will actively target this watermelon and try to destroy it. And if it hits basically anything, it will explode. Like that. <laughs> okay. And with that first attempt out of the way, cue the montage. Cataquax. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm trying <laughs> I guess I'm trying to sound mad, but really I'm not. This I mean, if I got it that far on like attempt 2, then it can't be that hard. Okay, I guess that rather than the watermelon dying and my personality and my anger dying, it appears that I am the one that is the dead. Okay, back to the montage.
Okay, I don't want to jinx it, but so far, so goo. Just gotta get it past without letting the Cataquax touch it. And from what I gather, the Cataquax don't actually try and go after the Watermelon, it's just that if they touch it, they will kill it. And I'm pretty sure the same applies to Piantas, so I'm not gonna get them touched. Okay. Watermelon. Watermelon. Sure is good. And if it touches the water, it explodes. Yet it can survive rolling off a cliff. Because that's perfectly fine. No. Please. Please don't be cruel. <laughs> don't be cruel, game. Like, you can't just leave it out with the other watermelons that the contestants have. You have to, you have to bring it all the way there yourself. Because Nintendo really loves its player base. Okay. Almost there. Please. Please. Don't be cruel. <laughs> and I'm glad I didn't get killed by that Cataquack, because that would have been freaking sucky. Okay. Almost there. Slow and steady. There we go. Whoa, that's a big old watermelon like I've never seen. I don't even need to get out the caliper for this one. You win. <sighs> that took longer than I thought. Well, actually, it didn't even take me longer than I thought. It was definitely annoying, but not nearly as rage-inducing as other people made it seem. But anyway, once we go ahead and grab this by standing on top of Juicer Blades. That will be the last Shine Sprite of Gelato Beach, and that is also our 30th, which means if we go ahead and talk to that guy in every level, we can get those sh those sunglasses now. But I don't think that the video is quite long enough to satisfy that, so why don't we go ahead and check out that submarine that the game clearly so wants us to go find out about. And then Toad also said that the princess was kidnapped. Also, if you look at the bottom, it says Deb's alert. Princess Peach of the Mushroom Kingdom has apparently been kidnapped. Again. The suspect was last seen escaping to the west with the princess in tow. Thank you, Delfino News. Are you, are you still being mad at the wall? Yeah, he, this guy is still friggin' mad at this wall, man. Like, it's not like there's anything I can do about it. I, all that's there is a wanted poster. And I actually hear it. Oh, <laughs> there's a shine sprite in there. Well, I'll definitely get that when the time arises. Also, I'd like... I'd like y'all to pay close attention. You see how bright it is outside in Delfino Plaza right now? It was not that dark. But anyway, it's Shadow Mario. Well, no kidding, Flood. And the area decides to reset because of that. Okay, well, let's just... What you gotta do is you gotta get in this cannon and blast off! Now, clearly from that trajectory, Mario should miss, but apparently not. And we get to go to Pina Park, Episode 1, Mecha Bowser appears. And thankfully, it is not the Mecha Bowser from Mario Galaxy that is, like, just a toy. And we're starting off actually just chasing Shadow Mario, which is a pretty different formula from what we're usually used to. Now, let's just head after him. Okay, what do you have to say? Welcome to Peanut Park. Thanks. You're clearly not at all concerned with that guy who was one minute ago holding a princess, but is now not. Now, you're not actually supposed to squirt him right now because it's physically impossible. I'm pretty sure he's running faster than you can. And you just gotta chase him over here. Oh my god, he's Moses! 
Not really. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, no religious, no religious jokes, especially seeing as how they're not mine. But, uh oh. <laughs> Flood, how would you even know? You don't even have eyes. You have two screws on the side of you. Oh, his eyes are glowing red. He means business. And that guy's equipped with a flamethrower, apparently. Amazing! What a spectacle! Is this a new show of ours? You guys are great! Whoever hired you needs a raise! I love how you played the fearless hero when he's like a bad version of you, but you both look the same and stuff. What do you mean we look the same? I've got. I, I mean, I, my hat is red! Well, as director of this park, I want to ensure your success. So, how about I provide you with a hero's vehicle? Follow me! Um. Some hero's vehicle, buddy. <laughs> So I guess I should explain what's gonna happen. You're on the roller coaster here, and Bowser's gonna be firing those missiles at you. So what you gotta do is you gotta a bullet bill approaches from behind. Uh-oh. But what you're supposed to do is you just gotta take aim and Okay, if the camera can stop freaking out. But we are on a roller coaster. You gotta shoot Bowser in the in in the belly. Or just shoot Bowser in general. I'm pretty sure if you shoot him in the head, you get extra. It counts as two hits, but whatever. Okay, uh, let's just aim for the head. Yeah, direct hit. If Flood says it's a direct hit, then that means it counts as two. Danger, danger, danger Will Robinson. Okay, now if he gets too close, you just gotta shoot the flames with water. And... These are like water rockets, so they won't explode if you shoot through the fire and the flames. It will carry on. Eh. Okay, when these bullet bills show up, you just gotta shoot them with your water and make them disappear. Now that's gotta be. Now that's pr some pretty strong water. I bet. I bet Delfino's residents are proud of it, seeing as how their w the water on their island is able to stop a speeding bullet. But then again, if Matt Pat is to be believed, those bullet bills really aren't that harmful. Ow. <laughs> and... Well, that... Wow, that was it. <laughs> but now we get some extra unskippable cutscenes. Well, Bowser Jr., welcome to your first appearance in the Mario series. And your most annoying voice actor, too. Leave my mama alone, you bad man. I won't let you take Mama Peach away. Mama? Mama Peach? I didn't know Peach was into bestiality. Yeah, Papa told me all about it. Even though that doesn't even make sense, seeing as how Bowser Jr. is, like, twice Peach's size. Great job, Egad. You really, you really, you really screwed up this time. Mario's a bully. He never fights fair. He try to outsmart Mario. Well, right, well, they, they, they locked, they locked us up for a good day or two. Only if you stop talking. <laughs> No. <laughs> the cutscenes have so much fun crap to make fun of. Uh oh, Corona. That's not good. No, no, no alcohol on YouTube. 
but apparently he had a shine sprite. Apparently he was being powered by a shine sprite, so I guess that's uh, two stones for one bird because Peach got away. <laughs> shine. <laughs> really not much else to talk about now. But... Actually, let's, let's talk to Toadsworth before ending the video. I can't imagine what the poor princess is going through! Mario, please save her! Okay, I'll save her after I squirt you with my flood juice. Blah 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 blah! <laughs> Toadsworth. <laughs> but anyway, now that Bowser Jr. has been revealed to be the culprit, and he's still gonna make us chase him through a Shadow Mario through for another like five worlds, we're gonna end the video. So next time on Super Mario Sunshine, we're gonna head back to Pina Island and get some more crap that we didn't get there. I will see you then.